is Steve T. Menon. I am joined here with Prof. Lou on this side and Annabelle Abel. Today we are doing a portfolio critique on Annabelle's art portfolio, which is awesome that she's here with us today. If you're looking to strengthen and flex your art muscle, Art Prof is the community for you. We have tutorials, critiques, and more, and it's all for free. So Annabelle, I know that you are an undergraduate student at FIT, which is the Fashion Institute of Technology. Could you tell us a little bit more about um, your experience at FIT, where you are at as you're in your artistic career, what you do at FIT, um, and anything else you think would be useful for our audience to know? Sure. Um, I'm a sophomore at FIT for advertising and marketing, like you said. Um, and then on the side, I do art. I've been doing art for a while. Uh, my mom's an artist. So I've had uh, the privilege of having some good teachers. But um, yeah, it's just kind of, it's more of a passion thing than a work thing. So. <laughs> so Annabelle, is this all work that you've done independently on your own? Or is any of it done in a class situation? Uh, no, I've done all of this on my own. Cool. And then would you say, do you have any goals about where you want to go with your work, whether it's a long-term goal or certain things you want to work on right now? Um, I would just say exposure and, you know, getting more commissions and just getting my name out there. Um, and just in terms of art, I kind of want to focus more on illustrative stuff because that's been a recent um, thing I've been having a lot of fun with. So deep, deep, let's uh, dig in. What is your first impression of Annabelle's overall portfolio before we get into the individual pieces? Well, overall, the first thing that I noticed is that you have a ton of diversity in your portfolio. You are working with what it seems like a ton of different painterly materials, sculpture, um, collage, 3D. So you really have a fun diversity. And I think also the thing I noticed in a lot of your pieces is that it seems like you're really enjoying making the work. And there's um, a lot of personality that I'm seeing in the pieces. So they, they're a lot of fun. Um, I'm noticing an artist who's enjoying herself while making the work and is really committed to exploration and diversity. So that's really awesome. Clara, what do you see when you um, look at the portfolio as a whole? Well, I see diversity, not just in terms of media, but even in terms of the subject matter, because what I really like about the pieces, Annabelle, is you have some pieces that are a little bit more serious, for lack of a better word, <laughs> but you also have some pieces that are really playful and whimsical and have a very different type of personality. And so I know for a lot of artists, they really want to nail their artistic style, but I think considering that you're an undergraduate student right now, in my opinion, this is exactly what you should be doing is putting yourself out there, trying different things, and then eventually you'll definitely whittle that down. So that's very exciting. First thoughts about this piece, Deep Deep. I think this piece is really, really intriguing and draws you in immediately because of the almost secretive posture, it feels almost like I've caught this person in a moment of privacy um, through the facial expression and through the body posture, which I don't know if that was your intent, but I think that comes across really strong in a really strong way. And I love that because it creates intrigue. Um, I'm really enjoying the way that you're working with oils. I think the lighting situation is very interesting. I do think that like the anatomy on the face and the body could be strengthened a little bit more. Everything seems a little bit um, a little bit soft. And I think in some areas you could really carve out the bony structure and just make, um, the anatomy a little bit more right now. It feels like it lives a little bit in the uncanny Valley of like being almost exaggerated, but also seemingly exactly human. Um, and I think we have to like push it one way or the other. So I think doing some anatomy st uh, studies and figuring out which way you want to go and push it a little bit more in one direction could really help you. We have a question from Neil. Is there a cultural significance with the makeup? Do you want to answer that, Annabelle? Uh, so this photo is actually just um, of a friend of mine. She's a model and she took the photos herself. I like asked her if I could use them, but uh, no, she just put the makeup on and took some photos. 
to my knowledge, at least. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I would agree with Deep D about the anatomy. Have do you have you ever had a chance to really sit down and study anatomy, or are you really just going off your observational skills as far as anatomy goes? Um, in the past, I have. Um, I did a painting internship with an old art teacher and stuff like that. So I have had some time, but it has been a while. <laughs> yeah, because I think it would be worth buckling down on some of those skills because I can see from your portfolio that you do have interest in the human figure. It's a subject that does pop up fairly often. And so mm -hmm. once you gain that skill, that's really going to help you pretty significantly in the future. So Rob Milk is asking, is there a halo around the figure's head? That's a question for you, Annabelle. Uh, yeah, there is. I kind of I wanted to add some background interest and just kind of make it a little bit more mysterious, I guess. <laughs> Deep D, what do you think about the halo? Do you think it's working? I think right now the halo isn't really reading as a halo to me because I think the background, um, I think, seems not completely finish. What I do like about the background is that it, for me, it hints almost at like atmospheric perspective. And at first I was like, oh, is she in a, in a lake? And that's like the sun behind her head causing an illumination. Like I was trying to find things, but I feel like the background, you could do a little bit more to allude to space. Um, I was like, it would be really interesting if she was in a lake with the whole narrative and maybe it's like the sun is rising over the horizon. I don't know what your intent in creating this piece was, but there, there's a lot you could do with the narrative. Narrative, um, and in the background. So right now the halo just feels like um, an afterthought with the background, like you weren't really sure what to do. So you created that and it does, you know, draw our eye there, but it, it comes off a little bit more as an afterthought. So I think just doing maybe some thumbnail sketches and figuring out the background in the early on stages can really help with that. But Clara, what do you think about the background and this halo? I think the background for me, the color is too similar to the figure. It's the same purpley grayish tones. And so I think for that reason, you're losing a lot of contrast because there's a similarity in there. I would agree about the halo. I feel like I see those all the time. And the thing about a halo, a halo is not just some visual effect. Like usually halos are in there because they're associated with spirituality or religion. And I'm sort of guessing that's not what this painting is about based on what you said. So I would just be careful about motifs like that because they can get you in trouble if that's not what you want to do. <laughs> so we do have an anatomy series that you guys can binge. We've got parts about eyes, torsos, and so you could run through that at some point to nail down some of those anat anatomical features. So Deep D, what do you think about this one? This piece causes this, uh, creates the same level of intrigue in me. I think what is it mainly is, is that I can't tell if these are two different figures, but I'm reading it as two of the same figure in different moments in time. Almost like one is reminiscing on the other, the one that's looking at the other. And I think it obviously creates a little bit of intrigue because of the like nakedness of the body and the, the vulnerability. Again, I'm seeing a thread in vulnerability in both of the two pieces, which I think is a cool theme that you're exploring. And um, maybe you already know that, maybe you don't, but if not, that would be a cool thing to you know notice that you're exploring that. I think what I am missing a little bit is an activation in the lower half of the canvas. There's a lot going on on the top half and I'm really getting stuck there. There's really interesting diagonal space, compartmentalization, but I think the composition could be adjusted a little bit more so that the whole canvas is activated. Clara, what are your initial thoughts? Yeah, I would agree with that because I do feel that in terms of composition, the piece looks like it's just split in half. So I don't have a really compelling reason to want to hang out in the lower section of the painting. But Annabelle, I'm just wondering, did you have a specific intent with the background? Is this supposed to be a particular place or is it more of a fantastical place? Um, so these are actually photos I took of my partner in my room. So this background is my room and I decided to just, um, like it is this geometric because it's an attic, but I kind of wanted to smooth it all out a little bit. Um, I was kind of playing with the idea of like project, like almost like I was like projecting his body onto the wall 
kind of. Um, and I guess with the bottom half of the painting, I just got a little bit stuck because I didn't want to like distract from the work I'd already done and like stretch an entire like body on the bottom half. Um, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I think Annabelle, you have just encountered the background police. Yeah, it is, we're that is my worst. That is my worst. <laughs> Yeah, it just seems like the background isn't something that you're thinking about in advance. And then you get nailed later on when you're working on the final painting. And it is hard to go back and fix things. So it's not just a planning issue. I also think it has to do with intent. For example, if I look at this and I don't know it's your partner, I don't really know what you're trying to say because it's such a cold, sterile space, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's nothing on the wall. There's no furniture. And so for me, there's almost a clinical feeling to it, almost like a okay. hospital. And I'm going to guess that wasn't your intent. Like, did you have yeah. a certain vibe you wanted to give this painting? I mean, I guess it would be more calm, but I definitely understand how you're seeing the hospital. Now I'm kind of seeing it too. Um, yeah. And like, I just kind of wanted to empty out like, the space to focus on working on the body, but that was, I guess, more for me than the composition of the painting. We have this comment from Seven Angelic that says even some more geometric shapes or something in the lower half would be nice. And I was also thinking that in the sense that, you know, if you were to rework this piece, you wouldn't mm -hmm. necessarily need to put another body in there. I think the the, you're cre creating a lot of curiosity in this space, whether or not it is calm or sterile. I think the space is causing or creating a lot of conversation, which I think is something to pay attention to. And if you wanted to, I think that working on the space and how the space of this piece shows up maybe in that bottom half could be another way to activate it. It doesn't necessarily have to be another part of the body. So if you're trying to mm -hmm. lean towards a calm cozy environment rather than sterile. I wonder how maybe that bottom half could activate that and create that narrative for you. All right, let's take a look at this piece. It's an oil painting titled Egg Drop Soup. What's your first thought, Deep D? It's so interesting that this is an oil painting because if you had asked me originally, I would have thought maybe it was watercolor or gouache. Like it has a really, really... I guess painterly is the wrong word because oil paint is paint, but this really like watery, loose texture that comes from watercolor that I see pretty easily. But I'm so interested how you accomplish that. Like even the cracks in that big brown eggshell, I find so um, reminiscent of watercolor. I think the composition is one area that again, you could work on in this piece. I wonder what it would look like maybe if you, shifted your camera a little bit to the left so we could see a little bit more of the hand and then zoomed in. I'm not really loving this halo. Again, it's kind of like a halo of the plate. I think it's mm -hmm. um, it's not really telling me too much, you know, if the plate had something going on, but it just seems like a white space. So I want to see more of the texture maybe of the egg drop soup and who's a little bit more information about the hand. Um, that's what I'm craving. And I'm craving a little bit less of the plate. But Claire, what are your thoughts? I really like this piece a lot. I think that your brushwork, especially, it's a lot looser and more gestural. I mean, granted, it's not a figure painting like the last two that we saw. But I think in the two figure paintings we've looked at, there's a tightness to your painting technique that I don't see here. I think here, there's a lot more movement. And I love the contrast that the egg is so fluid and watery, but then the eggs look really rigid by comparison. So you do a really nice job, I think, getting that range of textures. I think it comes down to composition. I think that's what we're seeing is that you have really good painting technique, you're able to articulate things, but you're getting nailed in terms of the composition. So I guess my question for you, Annabelle, is how much do you plan your compositions in advance? Do you do thumbnails? Do you just get the canvas and start painting? What do you do? Uh, yeah, I usually do thumbnail sketches. Um, with this one, I was just painting from photographs that I took because I thought it would be, I don't know, just like a funny pun painting. <laughs> um, but 
Uh, yeah, so I do thumbnail sketch and for more conceptual paintings, I think honestly I do more spatial planning and like reworks than I do for portraits, which is definitely something that just kind of clicked, so. <laughs> So we have some comments. It looks like people are really responding to this one, Annabelle. PKMN says, I think this piece is the strongest thus far. I like the color palette. Frank Hilario says it's very fluid. And Margaret is saying this is very painterly. And I love this comment from AJ who says, looks like an animation still. I'm waiting on the person to stir. So maybe that's what it is that I'm seeing is that we feel like we're in the moment with this painting and that's why it's different from the figures. I don't know, what do you think, Deep Deep? Yeah, I, I think it has um, a level of motion to it that I think the figures didn't have that felt very static um, and almost like a like a moment in time whereas this really feels like it's, it's motion and there's fluidity and movement and I can see the artist's hand in the piece a little bit more through the brush stroke. So I'm really responding to that. And I love your manipulation of a pretty common medium as well. Like that's a very um, strong skill that you have and the ability to do this is not easy. So that's really awesome. And I think I'm really responding to that as well. One thing I might consider, Annabelle, is I'm not totally convinced you need the hand on the right-hand side because yeah. I was just thinking the eggs and the spoon already tell the story. And in fact, I feel like the size of the hand is a little bit small compared to the spoon. I mean, that's a little bit picky, but my feeling is that painting is sort of like packing. Like if you don't need to bring it, don't. <laughs> you know. So I would imagine that maybe that's just one thing you could eliminate in the composition, you would yeah. still achieve the same effect. All right, so we have this piece, it's called Happy Birthday. It's done in acrylic. Deep D, what do you think? I love that this piece has a element of humor to it. I think we haven't seen that in your previous pieces there. Um, I think through the color choices and through the strangeness of the hands in there and the fact that it's like poking the cake, there's a, there's a, a level of childishness and humor to it, which I enjoy that works very well with the idea of happy birthday. I think immediately what I'm noticing here is um, a lot of the colors that you're using look like they're straight out of the tube. They're very, um, they're almost a little bit flat, especially this black in the background and the pink in the cake. And I wonder if you could mix your own black to create a more dynamic background because that black is so much of the canvas. Again, this is background, you know, camera coming down on you, but um <laughs> It, it is so much of the canvas and it does kind of read as an afterthought, especially because the black is so black and we don't see that anywhere else mm -hmm. in the piece. And again, the pink is so pink and it just feels like these colors were put straight from the tube. And I think it lacks a level of juiciness. Um, like I really want that cake to be super delicious looking and super mm -hmm. palpable. And I think you can get that from mixing your own colors. And that's something you can experiment with in the thumbnail stages too, you know, like how to mix colors and where to, what to make in your background. Clara, what are your initial thoughts? Yeah, I feel like I want more of the hands because the hands are actually the most compelling part of the story because you see the cake, you think, oh, it's a cake, okay, whatever. But then you see the hands, you go, whoa, what is happening here? But the thing is, right now at least, the cake is the dominant image. I see the cake before I see the hands, but between mm -hmm. the two, the hands are way more intriguing. So I would think about maybe a different point of view. Maybe you're looking down at the cake. Maybe there's more than two hands. I get the feeling that these are two figures. They don't seem like they could be from the same figure, the two hands. And so that makes me think maybe you could include more of their bodies. But I think that would be really great to see. Like, did you have a certain idea with the hands? Something you were trying to say? So I actually woke up in the middle of the night and painted this because it was from a dream that I had. So I guess that's kind of why I blacked out the background. I did this in like an hour and went back to sleep. But um, yeah, so like, I don't know. I feel like I wanted to add interest and also make it a little bit more of a question rather than an image. Uh, I do definitely agree 
that the cake is taking up too much space or like that or like more hands are needed. Um, so we have a question from Hellish D. How can we plan the background in advance? Does it have to link to the elements of the painting? What do you think, Deep Deep? I don't think that a background has to link to the elements of the painting, but I think that what happens a lot of the time is that a background is an afterthought for people and you fail to realize, not you specifically, but yeah. in general, people fail to realize that a background in percentage is so much of a canvas and it really can activate so much space and tell so much of the narrative or just create so much depth. You know, it really is a tool that a lot of people can use. So I think thumbnail sketches are the best ways to plan a background in advance because you have, you know, the subject matter, but then you also have the background that you're planning in advance. And it doesn't always have to link to the elements of the painting and have some deep meaning or whatever. But I do think sometimes it will just look like a cutout on a blank page, which really reads like that a lot of the time. And, you know, if you give a little bit more to the background and give it some depth or some more thought, I think 100% of the time, if you allow it to have a little bit more meaning, that meaning will come out and you'll find something to put there. So I just say plan, make some thumbnail sketches and see what you can dig up. All right, let's take a look at this slide and just to explain what we're looking at. So the image on the right, that's the original image that you sent us, Annabelle, with your portfolio. Mm -hmm. And what I did on the left is I actually cropped it. And that's the version we're going to critique because I actually find it really distracting. If I'm looking at an artwork and there's like a crooked border, it's hard to see accurately. So I would just say this is a, a moment to recognize the importance of photographing and editing your artwork really well anytime you show it to anybody. I know that might seem sort of silly because you're like, oh, well, it's, it's just a critique. It's not like I'm sending this off on a job application, but it's a good habit to get into because it definitely helps people see your work in its best light. So what I did on the next slide, this is just the image with a cropped border so we can look at the image a little bit better. Um, Deep Deep, what do you think? This is such an interesting use of mixed media. I think what I'm noticing here is um, the narrative that's being formed and the use of these two different media. I'm really curious on your collaboration with this photographer, which maybe I'll ask you about in a second. But um, I think what I noticed at first is that it's a very peaceful image. The photograph looks very peaceful. It almost looks like a modeling picture that I would see in a catalog for like J. Crew or Abercrombie or something, you know, like it, it, the emphasis on the, um, fabric is really important and the serenity in his face. But then the gouache element really causes a lot of intrigue and almost is jarring because it almost looks like the character has, or the subject has been hit or stung by a bee or something to, you know, it's not a beautiful addition. It's, it's almost a sad, tragic thing that looks like it happened that looks really painful. So then it changes the narrative completely into like, you know, maybe they're serene or accepting this awful thing that happened to them. So what I'm noticing at first is it's a seemingly very simple image that's, you know, very calm and serene, but the addition that you've added adds so many layers to it, like cake, um, which I think is really impressive. Clara, what are your initial thoughts? Well, I'm curious to know, Annabelle, about mm -hmm the photographer because on the right hand side you guys can see we've listed the information and so it says photo by gabriel anderson so can you tell us about uh the photography aspect and if this was a collaborative piece or how you see it yeah so he is one of my friends and he's a photographer he goes to parsons he's very talented you guys should check him out um but i i don't know i've just been working with him a little bit and like taking photos like with him and I really wanted to do something with one of his photos. So this is what turned up. <laughs> I mean, I love the fact that it's an artist, you know, because I think that's such a big difference than say, for example, I know a lot of people and we've talked about this on some of our other streams. will just take some image off the internet without any permission, alter it and then post it as their own. And that can, 
get you in a lot of trouble in some circumstances. So it's really nice to hear that this is a collaboration. My feeling about the piece is that I'm so intrigued with what's happening in the face that I feel like I don't need the body. Now, I don't know how your friend would feel about you taking the piece and cropping it if that is something you guys talked about or agreed upon in advance. But I feel like you could crop it underneath the neck and it would be better because then I get to really absorb the part of the photo that I think is the most intriguing. So do you think that that's something you could do or would you have to run it by Gabriel? Like what, what did you guys agree on? <laughs> I guess is what I'm asking. Oh, he, he just kind of gave me free range. I don't think it would be a big deal. Cool. We got a great comment from 10,000 Crows. I love how all of Annabelle's artworks make me ask questions and want to know more. And Frank is saying, looks like he's melting out of reality. I really like the concept. And Hellish D says it's so beautiful. My mind is a little convinced it's actually pencil or charcoal. I love it. Very cool. So it seems like you're getting a lot of great reactions to this. And I guess I like this piece because it's more subtle. Out of all the pieces we've seen, it's like, you know something has changed, but it doesn't scream at you the way some of the other pieces do. I don't know, like where does this piece occupy itself for you? Does it feel like a one-off? Is it something you wanna try again? Um, I definitely enjoyed doing this. And what I did actually before I act uh, painted on the print that he gave me is I took tracing paper and painted um, basically what I did on the paper on tracing paper. Um, so I had a duplicate, and so you, we did um, a photo, or I did a photo series with the two. Um, but there were just there's like a lot of them, so I didn't want to like make the PowerPoint super long. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting to work with other people, especially photographers, when I mainly do, um, you know, physical mediums. So I really enjoyed that. Cool. All right, we've got an oil painting. Deep D, what do you think? I mean, I feel like I'm amazed constantly at how different all your pieces are. Like every time it's like, whoa, like, you know, but I feel I feel like there's a common thread where it's awesome that I can tell that each of these were made by the same artist, which is such a hard thing to do. You're really tackling so many cool motifs and ideas and themes and uh, materials, but I can still tell that this is Animal's work, which is really, really awesome. This piece caught, I mean, all your pieces are causing, call wow, I can't talk, are creating so many <laughs> questions and intrigue. And I think I love that. What I'm really responding to in this piece is the interesting textures that you have going on, especially on the figure and on the chair. And I think what I would love to see is, um, I, I thought about this in some of your previous pieces, but in this one especially, I was like, I think you can really play with texture and try to really exaggerate and show what materials each thing is like th there is clearly a difference between the body texture and the surface there and the chair and the cage perhaps but maybe you can do a little bit more with your marks and the way that you treat the canvas to show like is that metal cage metal or is it made of the same fabric that the chair is i'm so intrigued by this figure it almost looks like a geode or a marble stone or something but i'm like it would be lovely to really see that form and shine that a stone might have if that is what you you know are making it out of um and really draw out the figure because i can tell through the silhouette that it's a figure but i can't really tell what material it's made of and it's i'm craving that a little bit more i'm curious annabelle um you know, what? what is the thought behind the figure's swirly interior? Um, so I kind of was going more for like movement, I guess. Like, I guess I could best describe it as like static, you know, more just like, um, I guess it didn't really come out as well in the photograph, but I definitely went for more of, I like was playing with texture a lot with this, which was really fun for me with a, with a small brush. Um, yeah, I don't know if I was going for any particular uh, material type, but I do think that taking it the mineral direction would be super cool. Well, Annabelle, I have to say out of all the pieces we've looked at so far, I really like this background. In fact, I like the background so much that I don't know that you need the figure. I think the background is so bizarre. I'm like, where <laughs> are we? <laughs> like, is this a padded cell? Is it supposed to be a 
place for a person. And then, you know what else makes the scene even more interesting is all the stuff that's on the ground. And I'm like, what is happening here? Like, it's a really disorienting scene, but it keeps me very curious. And so I think for me, this painting is such a great example of like, wow, look at what you can do when you really think about that background. Because to me, the background here and the props you have, they tell much more of a story than the figure does. I actually find the figure less engaging, I think partially because the pose is a little bit confusing and I'm not totally sure what the figure's relationship is to the space. But the space alone, I think, is really phenomenal. So I would definitely keep this in mind. And this is, I was actually going to say this, 10,000 Crows, you beat me to it. I feel like I want the space to be filled up with even more strange objects. I think that'd be phenomenal if you had more stuff that was like up against the wall mm. in the background, maybe some objects that are bigger. Maybe there's four more cages. I have no idea. I just know that I love this environment. I would love to see you develop that further. All right, Deep Deep, how about this self-portrait in colored pencil? Again, you're using your materials in a really interesting way because if I didn't know that this was color pencil, I could have thought this was you manipulating oil painting in a in an interesting way. I love the fluidity of this one. It's it reminds me of the figure in the previous one, but I don't read it as geode. I almost read it as like I look into their muscular anatomy or something like that. Again, I do think that you could play with texture a little bit more. I think the hair texture you're doing nicely here. I, I am like understanding that it's hair and it kind of has that waspiness that hair has, but I, I'm, I would like to see a little bit more um, detail in the texture of the body since that seems to be the most prevalent thing. I also wonder like, with the anatomy, I mean, I do think that you could push the anatomy again to either be a little bit exaggerated or a little bit more realistic. But in this piece, because so much of it is based on this bizarre muscular or, or whatever it is structure inside, mm -hmm. I think you could and, and the eyes look too big for the head or they're a little intense. I wonder if exaggerating would actually be the best way to do it really kind of go in a in a way where you're exploring this fluidity and this um, you know, overlap of muscle and what that could be. So I think that's a thumbnail sketch thing. Again, I also think composition and background here, like we talked about before is something I think you could crop in. The gaze is really interesting to me and I want a little bit more of that gaze in the back. So I think you could crop in and I don't think it needs to be a center composition. I think you could play around with different compositions and play around with the background um, to create a more interesting space and a more interesting way for us to activate around the whole space. Clara, what are your thoughts? I mean, I think your colored pencil technique is really terrific. In fact, if I had seen this image and not been told it's in colored pencil, I totally would have assumed it was a painting. And that's saying a lot because I'm sure you guys know in the chat, those of you who have drawn with colored pencil, it's a slow material. It is not easy to layer up those colors. And I just feel like there's a lot of volume in a material that is usually not very easy to do that with. So great technique as far as your use of the material. Same thing in terms of composition that we've mentioned in some of the other pieces. My feeling about this piece is that I'm not so sure you have to put so much emphasis on the eyes because I feel like the eyes are a little bit distracting because I actually find the forms in the background more interesting because they're more unusual. The eyes feel like they almost don't belong on this body because this body is surreal, it's strange, it's stretchy, but then the eyes feel sort of ordinary by comparison. So I guess what I'm saying, it make it weirder. Like there, there's nothing yeah. wrong with going a little bit more over the top to make that happen. Trent is saying, I love the pattern on the body. It flows so well, but I think having blue on the body and blue as the background weakens it a bit. What do you think, Deep Dee? Maybe a different color for the background? It's a little hard to say at this 
point. Part of me likes the blue in the body or a cool tone in the body because I think it's one of the few ways that this figure doesn't feel completely disconnected from the background. It does feel like, you know, naturally when you're in a space and light is reflecting off of the background onto you, there is um, hints of that, you know, background color. But I wonder if that blue can be used in a more um, deliberate way with lighting. Like if it's like a highlight blue that's coming on from, it, it does seem a little, um, it does seem a little bit different or, or disconnected, I guess what I'm is what I'm trying to say. So perhaps keep a cool tone, but you could try maybe a cooler purple or something that's a little bit closer to the body type. But I do think that playing around with the background and seeing what else you can incorporate there or the composition could help this problem as well. All right, so let's take a look at this piece, which is a mixed media piece and it's called Maka, how do you pronounce that, Annabelle? Yeah, you got it. Okay, I'm going to guess that there's a narrative here. What do you think the narrative might be, Deep D? Well, it has to do with teeth. I'll say that. Um, there, there is an <laughs> emphasis on teeth, and that's very clear. Also, the center figure seems like an older individual who I know someone who wears dentures and when they take their dentures out, the, their jaw structure and their mouth, it, it's so different. It like truly just goes like, and that feels like what this, uh, this figure is. So it almost seems like a nightmare or some sort of a, a dystopian relationship with teeth and with um, any sort of oral just dentistry which Clara, I know you have some experience with and you've made work about that. Is that what you're thinking to when you're looking at this? I feel like it might be a memory of the past because I almost feel like the three figures look like different generations in a family. And then of course there's the reference to the teeth, but then there's also these red strokes that go across. And I wonder if those could almost be characters that have been distorted. So Annabelle, enlighten us. <laughs> What's your thought behind this piece? Because it's a very intriguing image. So I have just been trying to, um, I don't know, learn more about Filipino culture because I am part Filipino, but I don't know. I just don't know that much about it. Um, and so I watched a video about um, there are above ground burials to where like if families can't afford um, to keep their loved one um, buried, they'll like take them out after, I think it's like a five year lease. Um, and then the teeth are like a pre-colonialization artifact from uh, the Philippines. So they used to have like goldfish scales on their teeth. Um, and so I kind of just wanted the red to be now because I think they're in a museum in the Philippines and then, um, you know, in the afterlife, they're still like looking, they're looking on where that ended up now, I guess, is kind of the, the way I was going with it. I, it's such an intriguing story and I love the personal connection. I think you got to make more work about this. <laughs> it's like <laughs> so much to talk about in what you mentioned that it's almost like one artwork is not enough for you yeah. to thoroughly talk about it because I feel like there are certain parts of the piece that I'm like, whoa, those teeth are intense. But Ganesh is saying, I really love those random big brushstrokes in the background. So this might be a piece that, not that you do it again, but maybe you need to make several artworks to really work through a lot of that subject matter because it sounds very powerful. Deepti, Deep, what do you think about this figure study in oil. This figure is interesting because it reminds me of that figure in the cage with all of the um, strange objects around it. And it's almost in a similar pose and has a similar body texture. So it feels like a diptych almost, like that could be one and this could be the other. Um, I think what's really intriguing to me is the lighting situation in this piece. I feel like there's a very clear light source coming from the right hand side, illuminating the body and the um, the fabric that it's on. But I do think that exaggerating that a little bit could help because I, I'm getting a hint of that lighting situation, but it's not super clear to me. And I think 
you could exaggerate that a little bit more to really shape out the anatomy of the body since that's such an important and huge part and the fabric drapes like all of that could be really exaggerated and enlightened with higher contrast with the light again i do think that we could crop in a little bit the harshness of that red line showing the wall and ground is a little bit distracting for me so i think that the space um, could be thought about a little bit more in the composition i am really interested by this pose because it reminds me so much of that caged figure but it's different in a way where that caged figure seemed like it was in a bit of a food coma whereas this figure seems like it's almost praying or it feels like very religious and um sad a little bit so that's an interesting comparison clara what are your thoughts well i'm cheating a little bit because your title says figure studies so that <laughs> sort of makes me think it's not about religion and maybe it's a thing <laughs> you're making to practice your skills is that more the case or is deep deep more on it yeah so it's kind of i mean it's not really necessarily religious but it is a combo it's there's a I have to remember the website name, but there's a great website I found for um, nude photo references for like painting and drawing. And they have, they have a lot of great models in there. So that was from one of those photos, but this is also just, um, I did it, I did it all or most of it with a palette knife. Um, but I don't know. I was also just going through it at the time, uh, bad breakup. So I think I kind of channeled some, <laughs> some of that energy into this. Well, I really like the palette knife work. And in fact, I'd love to see you do more palette knife work, but build the paint in a more sculptural manner, because this looks like a great beginning, but I'm wanting more. I mean, obviously it's a study. It's not a piece that you spent a huge amount of time on, I'm gonna guess, compared to some of the other pieces. Yeah. But I think playing with texture, might be a good way for you to push your painting technique because we've seen that you're good at articulating forms and getting a range of different colors in there. But I love this idea of maybe building up this more muscular impasto type of technique with the painting. Now for something totally different, <laughs> we have these two characters. Deep D, what do you think? On initial reaction, I thought that this was maybe a design for like a tarot card or, or just a card deck. It has a very symmetrical and whimsical uh, feeling to it that I think you associate a lot with cards. Even the shape of the canvas reminds me of a card deck. So I don't know if that was your um, intrigue, but I think with cards, a lot of times it's like mystical and this could be like the two of fishes or the two of ghost heads or something, <laughs> you know, it has that kind of background to it. and. The color palette also reminds me of that. What I am missing in this piece is the background here. I think the white is a little bit just too stark, but I actually think the white could work if maybe you activated the border or something. Normally I don't encourage a center composition, but I think because maybe this is for a card deck or it kind of reminds me of that, it works, the symmetry maybe. But I do think that like the, the edges aren't really activated and the, there's a strange cropping happening in the bottom with the pool of water. So I think I want more of the space to be activated or maybe we crop in a little bit more, but those are my initial reactions. Clara, what are your initial reactions? I mean, I love that you're making these characters and also that you're drawing with markers. I mean, markers can be so painterly and versatile and I just love seeing a different side of an artist. Like this is so the flip side. My feeling looking at your work is, first of all, you have a lot of range, but I also think a lot of your pieces are really humorous. Have you thought about maybe like really pushing the humor more? Because my feeling looking at your work is that you want to be humorous, but part of you is a little hesitant. Am I way off or what do you think? I mean, I honestly didn't think about it until now, but I definitely can see that retrospectively. Um, this is one of like a, we were saying cards. It was like a print series I did. I mean, it's in in my brain. It's still continuing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I was just playing with like um, like creating my own characters and kind of just trying to like put them in an environment with other creatures. I don't know. The character design of this red figure is so interesting. Like I think their silhouette is really interesting. The facial expression is really interesting. And I feel like there's a narrative of this 
young girl or this young character who just gets themselves into strange situations like it seems like they have this like demon living inside of it that's appearing and it's not super happy about it but it's also like well this is my life and it, it, they're coming <laughs> to terms with it and just and I can see a whole series about this like red girl or this red figure who just gets into strange situations with strange things like the facial expression this the kind of like okay fine expression <laughs> is so funny to me so I agree with you totally Clara I think that this character design is really really strong and you should explore it more and you should create a series of prints or I, I want to see more of this of this red figure um a hundred percent and by the way, we do have a marker drawing tutorial for those of you guys who want to explore that material. And Annabelle, I'm super stoked to see this piece. <laughs> well, because I'm a big sculptor dork and I just love seeing people who mostly work in 2D dip into 3D because to me, this actually is very related to the characters that we just looked at. So I'm thrilled to see where this is going. Is this again like a one-off or do you want to explore more 3D pieces? Um, 3D wise, I do like small polymer clay things because that used to be a big thing when I was a kid. So I kind of just got back into it um, on the more serious side a little bit. Uh, in terms of this particular figure, he's kind of a staple of my like more like animation cartoon style stuff. And I've actually like tattooed him a couple times. So I thought bringing him to life would be really fun. What's um, your take, Deep Deep? Oh, I love this guy. I love that he's up to absolutely no good. It reminds <laughs> me almost of like, I don't know if you're a Harry Potter fan, but there's like, I think in Harry Potter 4 or something, there are all these little fairies. They're like these pixies and they get into, they're like no good and they get released in the classroom and they're just like going in people's hair and jumping on the lights and just <laughs> are totally a ruckus. And they're really small and they look like they can't do a lot of damage but they actually can because they're so small. And it reminds me of your character because it is kind of tiny and against this big TV, you wouldn't really think that it could do much, but then you see the damage that it's actually causing and you're like, oh no. I think what I want is I want to see more and I want to see what these guys can do to that TV and almost make the TV <laughs> a character in and of itself. Like it's such mm -hmm. a big part of this that I want to see the TV be a character and I want to know what the TV almost feels about like I was like I wonder if you said that the TV was was um it was broken when you found it right it doesn't it doesn't work yeah so I was like maybe you could break the screen a little bit and have these guys like almost like coming through the breaks I wonder if you could even position the TV in a way where the TV like looks like it's fighting back or <laughs> or um just something to give it a little bit more personality I think this yeah. has so much personality already we have a comment from Moonbeam who again you guys are like telepathic people are totally beating me to these comments <laughs> moonbeam is saying could use a couple larger ones more variations that was my thought is that it would be really fun if you had a couple that were like teeny teeny tiny and then maybe two that are maybe double the size of the ones you currently have because i find in sculpture variation in scale can be really helpful in terms of showing more depth because I think that this is a great idea and I'm thrilled to see it. And I'd love to, I mean, I basically want you to do more of everything, <laughs> but I just feel like there's something you could really tap into here because it's whimsical and playful, but also up to no good for sure. <laughs> and I love that. Comment from Michelle who says, maybe the hand can be bigger compared to the other demons emphasizing it, but I love the concept where the hand comes out of the TV. Yeah, so just thinking about more how the figures relate to each other, because that happens a lot in sculpture where you're just so busy working on individual pieces, mm -hmm. you forget that, oh, yes, they have to have some type of relationship. So you might even think about the physical distance between them. Like maybe there's two that are very close together. Maybe there's a little group. Maybe there are two that are very far apart because they seem a little bit too evenly distributed. I feel yeah. like I want it to be a little bit more random, a little bit messier. So yeah, definitely keep that in mind. Annabelle is on Instagram. So if you would like to follow Annabelle's work, you guys can check out Annabelle's Instagram. The link is also in the video description below. 
And Annabelle has a website. And I believe, Annabelle, you said you do commissions? Mm -hmm. Yes. Cool. So you guys can get in touch with Annabelle that way. And if you guys would like to be considered for a free portfolio critique to be done live here on YouTube, you want to go to artprof.org and you're going to click on art critiques, which will take you to this page. And you guys want to click on the purple button, which takes you to this submission form. So we would love to hear from you guys. Appearing on video is not required. I mean, it's fabulous. We love it when the artist is here, but we can also just critique your work. And as you guys know, wow, we have a lot of portfolio critiques. So you guys can go through our playlists and archives. Art Prof has a podcast. It's available on Spotify and also on iTunes. And in a few minutes, Deep D and I will be hanging out in the Art Prof Discord. You guys can meet us in the post live streams channel and subscribe to our channel and join the Art Prof family. And I want to say thank you to our top Patreon supporters for keeping Art Prof up and running so we can continue to keep all of our content 100% free. And thank you, Annabelle, so much for being here, for sharing your work with us. Good luck with everything. Thank Everybody, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.